Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. G here, coming at ya. Live. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. And uh, this is the video for 5.2 writing linear equations from tables. So let's get after it. Decline. I decline that. All right, here we go. So what we're going to do is we are going to have to write a linear equation. Whoa, what is happening? There we go. We're going to have to write a linear equation by looking at a table. We're going to have to write a linear equation. And remember, linear equations are y equals mx plus b. Okay, linear equations make a straight line on a graph. The m is always my slope or my rate of change. And the b is the y-intercept or the initial value or the starting value. So here we have a table. Uh, the table shows the volume of water released by Hoover Dam over a certain period of time. Okay, graph the data and find the slope and y-intercept of the graph. So if we look here, we have my x is normally almost always on the left, and my output or my y is always on the right. To find the slope, we want to find the change in y and divide it by the change in x. Okay, so I want to figure out how much is my y changing, how much is my x changing. So, what I can do is go figure out how much is my y changing from here to here, how much is my x changing from here to here. The way we figure out the amount of change, if we can't do that math in our head, the way we figure out is we're really just doing subtraction. So I'm really just taking 150,000 and I am subtracting 75,000. Okay, because 150,000 divided, subtracting 75,000 is going to tell me exactly what that change was. Okay, so here, let me erase them because I know I don't have very much room on this slide. I didn't think that one through. So if I do 150,000 minus 75,000, boom, 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 it's going to become 14, and that's 10. I'm going to get 75,000. So what I figured out is the change from here to here is we went up 75,000. Okay, so my change in y is 75,000. That's my numerator of my slope. My denominator is how much time changed. So, well, from 5 to 10, we can figure that out really easily. The change was up 5 seconds. So 75,000 over 5 seconds. There's my rate of change, but I can simplify that. Okay, so to simplify, I need to do 75,000 divided by... Five. And the cool part is I really am only doing 75 divided by 5. That's kind of nice because then I'll just bring my zeros up. So I'm going to get 15,000. So what we just figured out was the rate of change was 15,000 over 1. But let's figure out what each one of these means. So because it's change in Y, we're really talking about the change in the volume of the water. So that was 15,000 meters cubed over 1 second. So this, the Hoover Dam was releasing... 15,000 cubic meters of water every one second, okay? Because again, the y values represent the volume of the water, which was meters cubed, and then the x values represent time in seconds. So my change in y was 15,000 meters, cubic meters every one second. And now I can put it on a graph if I wanted to. But, well, I'm sorry, I can't yet because I need to figure out what my y intercept is. So I now know what my slope is. I really didn't give you guys enough room on this, but that's okay. I know what my slope is, so that's 15,000 x. Now I've got to figure out, well, what's that y-intercept? What did it start at? Well, from here, the y-intercept, by definition, is whenever x is 0, that's my y-intercept. So we can take this pattern. If we're going up 15,000 every 1, or if we're going up 75,000 every 5, I can go backwards and figure out, well, where, how much water did we have? when we started, how much water was releasing when we started. And so if I go back, backwards, because this is going up by five every time, so I can subtract five to get to zero to figure out what the starting point was. Well, because this is going up 75,000 every time, I can subtract 75,000 every to go backwards. 75,000 minus 75,000 is zero. So we're just gonna start at zero. And then we're gonna go up 75 over five each time. So there's my Okay. But the real big thing is I want the equation 
is 15,000 X plus zero. So do I actually need to write this zero? The answer is no. So my final equation is 15,000 X. And I'm done. It is a proportional relationship because it's a straight line that goes through the origin, which is why we don't have any of this extra stuff on the end. We don't need to write the plus zero. That means it's still linear, but it is now proportional. Okay, same idea here. So this one is going to be a little bit trickier. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. So uh, for this one, we don't, I'm not really worried about graphing it. I'm just worried about my equation and y equals mx plus b. Okay, we have the cost of a plan. We have how many minutes that person gets to talk on their cell phone in their plan. Okay, so first of all, I need to figure out what my slope is. So I need to figure out what my change in y over my change in x is. Okay, I'm just going to write ch to abbreviate change. Okay, so my change in y here looks like we're going up 6 each time. My change in x looks like it's going up 100 each time. So change in y over change in x. Okay, another way I could have figured that out is I could have just done 200 minus 100 and I could have done 20 minus 14. Okay, oh, but I'm backwards though. Ah, 20 minus 14 change in y, doing my subtraction over my change in x to get, again, 6 over 100. Now, Cool, we got that part down. Now I can simplify that fraction real quick. I can do six divided by 100, or I can just divide it by two to simplify, and that's gonna give me three over 50. Okay, so that means $3 for every 50 minutes included is the rate of change. So every, th every time you spend $3, you're gonna get 50 more minutes. Okay, because my change in Y was the cost of the plan. That represented dollars, 50 represent minute. So there's my rate of change. There's my slope, 3 over 50. Now, I'm going to include that, 3 over 50 x. Now we've got to figure out what is my y-intercept. Okay, I'm looking for my y-intercept. So what I can do here is I can just continue my plan but backwards because I can subtract 100. And the reason why I'm doing that is I'm trying to figure out what is when x is 0. When there's 0 minutes, how much money am I still spending? because that's going to be how much the plan costs anyways just to have the phone. So if I go back, and I'm sorry, I should be subtracting 6 here. If I'm going backwards, taking my pattern but including it backwards until I get to x is 0, and I'll have $8. So there's my starting point was $8. And I'm done here. Now, one thing that we could note is that does this really um, tell us how much we're paying per one minute? It doesn't, so you could actually do the 3 divided by 50 if you wanted to, or the 6 divided by 100 here, to figure out how much it costs per one minute and use that as your slope as well. So we could do the division to change it to a decimal, and if we did, it would be 0 0.06, which is 6 cents per minute, okay, plus the $8 that um, you have to pay up front. But there's my equation. Either one of these would have worked. Okay. Let's look at... Ah, let's just do one more. We don't need to do that one. Okay, so a salesperson receives a salary plus a commission for each computer sold. So here we have, we have the total amount of pay. There's my Y. We have the total number of computers sold. There's my X. They're using PNN, and that's fine, but I also want to show you that this also represents the Y. This also represents the X. This is my input. This is my output. The reason why the computer sold is my input is because of this, how many computers are sold, they sell is what's going to determine how much money they actually make. Okay, so again, we're writing the equation at y equals mx plus b. So the first thing I need to do is figure out the rate of change. And it looks like it's going up 150. So my change in y is it's going up $150. $150, because the y's represent dollars. My change in x, it's going up $150 every time they sell an extra two computers. So $150 per two computers, which can be simplified. If I do 150 divided by 2, 15 divided by 2 is 75, or 7.5. So it's 150 divided by 2 is 75. So that means for every computer sold, they're making an additional $75 in their commission. So every time they sell a computer, they're making 75 bucks. That's their commission right there. There's my rate of change. So in my equation, I know y equals 75 times x. 
Now I've got to figure out what's their weekly salary. So you want to figure out how much do they make if they don't sell a single computer just for showing up to work. So what I want to do is I want to continue my table, but I want to go backwards. If I subtract two, will I be at zero computers sold? And the answer is no, I will not. So, but can I still get to zero computers sold by subtracting two again? And I will, I'll be at zero. Okay, so that means I need to also go backwards twice by subtracting 150 twice. So 550 minus 150 is 400. 400 minus 150 is 250. So I know my equation that they have a $250 weekly salary plus $75 for every computer sold. And that's it. Okay, so I hope this helped. Hopefully we're recognizing the patterns in our tables. The biggest thing is the y-intercept is always gonna be when x is equal to zero. That's the big idea here, okay? When x is zero, that's gonna give you your y-intercept, so we have to continue our pattern backwards to get there, if it's not given to you already. All right, hope this video helps. Thank you for watching, and uh, hey, you guys all have a great day. G.